All right, we are now recording. So Kristen, whenever. Okay, Caitlin, do I see you? Hey there. Anybody, who else is there besides Maggie? Kate Sullivan. Kate Sullivan. Hi, Kristen. Who's there? Who? Kate, Kate. Sullivan. Catherine. Oh, oh, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good to see you all. So we are talking about supporting faculty and staff wellness. And I've got slides, so I'm going to share my screen. So I'm um, Kristen Croyle, I'm the Dean for Liberal Arts and Sciences, and one of the requests for spring breakout, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Where did I go? It's because, hold on, you're, you're covering, my screen is too small and the Zoom is, the Zoom window is actually covering all my controls for PowerPoint. Hold up. Let me do that again. One more time. Better. Okay, now I can see the controls. So one of the requests for um, spring breakout um, from faculty and staff was to talk some about resources for faculty and staff wellness. And if you had a chance to join us yesterday at the Student Success Symposium, we also spent some time there talking about it, but this will not be the same discussion. This will be a somewhat different discussion. So I'm clicking on like 50 things on my screen. So if I suddenly lose the slides, can someone tell me? That'd be great. Okay, so let's get started. This is going to be mostly an interactive quiz style format, but we're going to be talking about wellness according to the eight dimensions of wellness. Here is um, a quote from um, Margaret, Dr. Peggy Swarbrick. Um, and this quote kind of sums up the eight dimensions of wellness approach. She says that wellness is a conscious, deliberative, deliberate process that requires a person to become aware of and make choices for a more satisfying lifestyle. And the, the, this quote and the approach of the eight dimensions of wellness puts wellness, um, emphasizes the control that individuals have to understand the many dimensions of their own wellness and to take as much control as possible over those dimensions. So the reason that I wanted to start with a quote from Dr. Swarbrick is if you've seen the eight dimensions of wellness, sometimes there are seven or six, sometimes there's nine, but eight is the most commonly used number. Those, Dr. Swarbrick was actually the originator of that model in the 90s, and her work is primarily in um, addiction, actually, where the idea of how uh, addiction fits within an entire person and life and social connections and spiritual connections and physical health, where that that all encompassing approach to wellness fits very well with with a model of thinking about how addiction arises and how people overcome it. But that just means that she has extra super insight and her insights have been very helpful in developing um, a broad approach to wellness. So we're gonna be looking at these eight dimensions and talking about the different um, resources that we have on campus and that we can share together to kind of help to build our own control and understanding of our own wellness. So as always, um, if you've got thoughts, you can just say them or you can put them in the chat, that works too. So this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna introduce an area of wellness and then we'll talk about some resources. So physical wellness is the one we're gonna start with. And part of overall health includes regular physical activity, a healthy diet, sufficient sleep, and appropriate health care, creating healthy routines that balance activity with inactivity and that are manageable within our obligations and needs can contribute to this dimension. So I have, I have quizzes for you, but I have no actual, you're just gonna get fake bonus points every time you get one right. So what this is, is three of these are real things that we have here at SUNY Oswego and one is not. So which one do you think is not a real thing that we have at SUNY Oswego. You can put it in the chat. If you're there in person, you can say A, B, C, or D with your fingers. Thank you. I don't think we have one. 
We have a lactation room open for business, but we have uh -huh. oh, okay. See, these are good. So, do we have access to healthcare rooms? Well, they're not called that. Are they the lactation rooms? They are. Lactation rooms can be used as healthcare rooms. So, for example, if you had um, a medical need in which you had a nurse that came to give you an infusion or something, you could use one of the lactation rooms as a, as a healthcare room. Um, I know that um, Catherine Kerr is thinking about actually renaming them because we do have students who use them that way where they have um, kind of mobile health needs where they need a private space to do it. Sometimes um, people who are um, especially on kind of on the edge of diabetic control will want a private space in order to test and really <laughs> make sure they're, they're okay. What else? Free fitness center use? That, yeah. That's yeah. right. Is that for faculty? For faculty and staff, there is a fee. There's lots of there's, 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 oh, a fee. Okay. And it's because the fitness centers are supported by student fees. So students are already paying. That's why. But there is there is some um, suggestion that perhaps um, we want to move towards finding a way to give faculty and staff access as well. It would probably end up meaning it, we have to find another source of funds so that students aren't paying for faculty and staff use because that would not be fair. But it's a good idea. We definitely do have free pool access and the Walking for Wellness program is sponsored by the EAP. It's in April each year. Good job. Um, let's come up with two more suggestions, two more real things we have on campus to support uh, physical wellness. Any ideas? Nap time. Say again? The nap time. Nap time. If you have a private office, you can take a nap. And if better, you don't, go to the library. Better ergonomic furniture. Uh, yes. If you have um, if you have particular needs, you can request specialized furniture. But if you just want like a good office chair, we okay. have those. Are, are are suggestions like the actual things or things that these we... are actual things? If you want to add one that's a wish list, we can just put it on. Um. What do we actually have? support you have a wish list item oh the walking well trails. yeah the, the walking trails are real yes they are um so rice creek and um i will say that for wish list the pool being open during the summer they don't have a lifeguard though that's the issue Oh, They're looking for a life. They need a lifeguard. Yeah, they pay. So. <laughs> I'm not sure. I yeah. guess it's like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So you people understand how to do this. Let me do some more dimensions. Here we go. Social wellness. The social wellness dimension involves having healthy relationships with friends, family, and the community, and having an interest in and concern for the needs of others and humankind. It includes a sense of connection and belonging with others. Okay, same idea. Three of these are real. One is not. Unless I'm wrong, which is possible. This one, I might actually be wrong. Okay, you got an opinion? Hey, put it in the chat if you're on. Oh, Marianne says they're all real. And then some say... Okay, I haven't seen a lake cleanup event that includes faculty and staff. Have I just missed them? No. I mean, oh, I, I don't think I've seen Yeah, I just assumed there was, because I think I've seen them. There are student ones, but I haven't seen one that includes, obviously you can go and pick stuff up anytime you want, that is up to you. But I haven't seen an event that includes faculty and staff. Stuff a Bus is, a, is for um, raising money and resources for um, K through 12 students, it's a volunteer activity. We, def we definitely have that. It's sponsored by CIFA. If you're new to campus, CIFA is an acronym and it stands for State Employee Something Something. <laughs> but it's the, it's the charitable and fundraising organization that is run by employees on campus. So they raise money for K-12 students, for United Way. So you'll see a federated appeal, I want to say. State Employee Federated Appeal. I think that's right. It's close to that. Um, so you'll see some um, volunteer activities that are organized by CETA throughout the year. I always buy my spring flowers and my fall mums from them. 
Um, salt reading groups, I consider an aspect of social wellness because you get to get together and talk to people who have similar interests. Teal Tuesday is a um, fundraising and uh, uh, awareness event for ovarian cancer that we definitely participate in as a campus very um, enthusiastically, which is, sounds like an odd word for that, but it's, it is very real. Okay. Two more suggestions. Shooting for real ones, but if you have a wish list item, we can put that too. On Wednesday evenings, a group of us gets together in the field near the president's house and we rotate through sporting events. So if anyone wants to get in on that, Dustin organizes it. So Who organizes? Yep. Like 5 p.m. we get together on Wednesday evening. Show up summer, is that? just to show up. Yep. We're doing kickball this week. And I attach it to the Slack. There is a Slack. Yeah, talk to me. Something like that. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, excellent. That counts as two suggestions, I think. That was really good. Unless somebody else has a great suggestion. We also once upon a time organized uh, trivia at the cellar door and it's still going strong, even though we're not the organizers of that anymore. But there were always three or four strong faculty teams and staff teams. Isn't that still, is that on Wednesday nights or is it Thursday? Which um, I'm not sure what night it is now. It used to be Wednesday nights. Oh yeah, he does know because he's he's been there. I think it's Wednesdays too. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Like seven or something. Dare I say we need to go back to the noontime college hour so <laughs> that that only only social or wellness. Uh, well, I'll just say only wellness events can be scheduled during that time. That's not a bad idea. You know, having more wellness events at, during the day when people are on campus and. Like, yeah, I think it was the twelve forty time slot that. Yeah. Came uh, pop. Um, maybe also, I'm sorry. Maybe an open microphone for the people who play a musical instrument or um, sing something. Perhaps yeah. once a month would be nice if we have the room. Yes, we had one one uh, in the spring. But yes, yes, I like that. For every two months, I think it will mm -hmm. be nice. Okay, excellent. Let's try the occupational wellness dimension. This one finds involves finding personal satisfaction and enrichment from your work. And since we're all working, we can talk about it from your work. But if you were retired, you still have an occupational wellness dimension, but you achieve those, those needs through other activities. So here's four, what do you think? Which one is not real? Now you can debate about whether they're wellness things also, but I'm, I'm specifically asking which is not real. Okay, I see fingers in the room. What do our Zoom folks think? Okay, yes. Yes, we do not have an associate to full program. Whoops, but we could. <laughs> we could. An associate to full program um, would be something like people who are promoted, people who are on tenure track when they're in, at the assistant level or pre tenure. There's often a number of supports that are part of that. But when they get to associate professor, those supports are assumed no, to no longer be needed. But of course, that assumption is not true. Um, with the idea that some supports in thinking about promotion to full professor and what might be involved there might also be helpful. But we do not have that. If you want it, you should say you want it, and then we can work on that. Two more suggestions. What do you think? 
programs. What, say again? Self program is helpful. Yes, indeed. And the AQAC. Uh, uh, Excellent. And I know that all of you, okay, no is a strong word. I suspect that all of you, just like me, um, I do find, I find um, occupational enrichment, particularly development programs to be both rewarding and a stress reducer. Because when my mind is engaged and I'm thinking about growing and how I can develop something and how I can change something, that that helps keep me motivated and enriched. Environmental wellness. This is looks at pleasant, stimulating environments to support well-being. It includes access to clean air, food, and water, preserving the areas where we live, learn, and work, and promoting learning, contemplation, and relaxation in natural places and spaces. Now, one thing that also is part of environmental wellness that I didn't really emphasize in this description, if you think about where the wellness dimensions come from, if someone was going, if someone was using trying to get clean and going back to an environment in which their neighbors were using or selling, that would be an environmental wellness concern, not a social wellness concern. So living in, living in an unsafe environment or in unsafe housing, those, that, those are aspects of environmental wellness as well. So which of these, uh, which one is not real? I hope you know. That one be. That would be C. <laughs> That is, a, so if you are, um, if you are lucky enough to be right next to a construction zone, you know what an issue this is. <laughs> that sometimes like it really is an issue. Similarly, people whose offices are right next to commonly used classrooms, sometimes the sound, it, it does become an issue. But the Rice Creek trails are definitely part of environmental wellness. You know, we have um, about five miles of trails. Our exhibits on campus, being able to take a walking meeting. What other suggestions do you have? Have some plants, plants uh, in uh, big spaces, uh, especially during winter, it makes a big uh, difference. Of course, uh, if uh, faculty or uh, staff can take care of those plants, but I think to have uh, some plants in uh, Shinaman, for example, would be really a big difference. That's nice. In terms of wish lists, sorry, this phone ringing, it would be nice to have consistent temperature and humidity control in the buildings. Yes. A new building would be nice. Generally, Mahar sucks. Mahar is worse. I hear they're going to renovate that. Yeah. Yes, it's on the list. I mean, it's on the, like the soon list, not the one day we'll get to a list. Different list. Lake. Oh. Lake. Let's just put lake. There we go. Better access to the lake would be nice. awesome. There's this rickety staircase Stairs. that feels like it's going to be like, yeah. Area. Yeah. So, like, if there's actually, and I know there's probably liability reasons they won't do that, but I would love it if there was easier access. When we see you out there swimming, like, yeah. <laughs> Some requests actually my favorite. So, I have to put it on the list. My favorite. So, love that. Financial wellness. This is satisfaction with current and future financial situations. And that's a part of overall wellness and balance. It includes how you manage the day-to-day -day stress of living on a budget, along with having a plan for whatever your financial situation may be. There we go. What do you think? Sorry, I'm guessing it's HR benefits. Sorry, guys. HR benefits. I don't think they do this, but I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm with I'm with you folks. As far as I'm aware, we do not have an investment management service, but we do have retirement planning through UP. EA, the EAP is the Employee Assistance Program, and um, if you haven't used the EAP, it's really awesome. Okay, 
I'm just saying, it's really awesome. The EAP is SUNY wide. We do have um, a campus representative, but you don't have to go through them. And, and we didn't for a while and it didn't matter. You just call or contact the SUNY number and they can provide referrals for a whole bunch of stuff, mental health, financial planning, um, sometimes contract and legal issues. Um, it's awesome. And it's confidential and it's free. We do have a discount program through SUNY. If you're on Zoom, I'm gonna put it in the chat. All you have to do is Google SUNY discount program and it pops right up. Um, <laughs> there are all kinds of quirky ones, but there are discounts for AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon. And any other suggestions? Real financial wellness things that we have available. Like a banking service of some sort on campus, maybe. Yes. One more. But actually, the 12 month salary is a financial wellness thing. So you don't have to manage your salary every year to save up for the 10 months to pay for your two month bills. Our wish list or is this um, adding to the wish list now? But you can get your 10 month contracts for your over 12 months. Um, if you want. That's what I do. I like to use my um, child care. Can, can we say like child care for under 18 months? Because there's we're in a child care desert in this county. There's not, there's like one licensed operator in this county and the spots are really hard for under 18 months. Maybe not the county, but certainly in else we go, you know, you've got like one actual licensed facility and everything else you have to put together in between classes and it is stressful when you don't have family who can step in or you don't have you know reliable child care and the um the contractual raises that's from magdalena in the chat if you're not a black hold on i'm coming back I'm coming back there we go um and there is now a free will service which is not about free will it's about wills prepared freely <laughs> and um if i know when i was first on tenure track and i had two little kids it was kind of a big deal for me to have a will well the first time my husband and i took a trip together and left our kids we're like oh my gosh we need a will like what if something happens so i i was very reassured that i had access to a free will service oh magdalena so my, my suggestion was i uh I know some schools provide childcare uh, when there's there's like an evening event or weekend event so that parents can attend. Great. Thank you. Good suggestions. Okay, intellectual wellness. A cornerstone of being a fulfilled person is intellectual growth, recognizing creative abilities and finding ways to expand knowledge and skills. Ready? Oh yeah. So what what kind of tuition reimbursement can you get through UUP? Three credit hours per semester, which is not so bad, honestly. But 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 <laughs> not the fees. You have to pay the fees. Thank you, Magdalena. Not the fees. Work out of the gym for free. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> no, I can't awesome. want to pay your fees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, for those of you who are pretty new, there's also a UUP benefit that you can apply for, for additional development, which if you are traveling for a professional conference and use your travel money for that, if you want a, uh, an additional conference, you can apply to UUP for that. So it's good to know. And sometimes they have pretty good money available for that, at least based on the reimbursement. I'm not eligible, so I don't know. 
comment on the timing of that. I felt like many conferences this year were delaying everything because they weren't sure what the pandemic situation would be. And so I missed, I think, multiple opportunities to apply for funding because, you know, by the time I knew I was going to a conference, the deadlines had passed or I don't know. So possibly back to the financial things, but it'd be good to have just easy financial reimbursement for all work-related expenses. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And typically for professional travel from the college side, there, the, there's not the pre-application process, so it should be easier. We were just still a little short on funds this year. I don't know how restricted it is through the UUP process. Does anybody know? Are those timelines really, really strict? I don't know. But I know they've got money. What about two more real suggestions or wish list for intellectual wellness? Thinking of some campus-wide uh, great speakers, we have already, but perhaps more often. Yeah, I, I was. I second that. I was about to say the same thing. More invited speakers. Um, I know uh, honorariums are large these days, but well, we have science today. That should, right? That's a real thing. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's not even what it once was. It used to have off-campus yeah. people all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it should have more off-campus people, definitely. Yep. And the planetarium shows are great. Oh, good. Good one. And the telescope is pretty cool, too. It's when it rains, Creek? Yeah, like at 10 p.m. and like in the summer, they, you know, like later at night, they do a little presentation and then you can go see the planets that are in view and it's super cool. Yes, they will open up the telescope and you can find those announcements on Instagram. And I think Facebook, but I can't remember. Excellent. And if you didn't get a chance to come to the symposium yesterday, the keynote speaker was uh, super fabulous. I don't even know how many, I mean, he was so good. And he did allow us to record his, um, his keynote. And I believe John is posting it as part of the I think it was, I think he had sent out an email where the link for the recording was there. Yes, yes. Earlier, right? Yes, super fabulous. Okay, emotional wellness. Emotional wellness involves being aware of and accepting your feelings, adjusting to change, both good and bad, coping with stress, and enjoying life despite occasional disappointments and frustrations. What do you think? which is not real. For faculty, right? Yeah. Yes, for faculty and staff. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we definitely, we do. The EAP will provide mental health referrals. Counseling Center, if you say, can you come and do a session for us on wellness and relaxation and mindfulness? And they will, because they're awesome. And they have self-guided resources, but they do not provide on-campus counseling services for faculty and staff. It's beyond their scope, again, because their services are primarily paid through student fees, so they can't really spend the money on faculty and staff. And for those of you in Zoom, if you are curious, the self-guided, I just put in the link for the self-guided resources. If you're in the classroom, you can just Google that. It's real easy. Um, the self, this Counseling Center self-guided resources, they have, um, they have some suggestions for things like uh, relaxation and meditation apps. And yes, the EAP doesn't give you like a really personalized referral. They don't have that capacity, but they can provide you a, a suggested list. In network? In network, that's a good question. They're, they're a SUNY resource, so I assume. My sister took yeah. the anything. Yeah. 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 So two more suggestions, what do you think? May I say something? Yes, the somebody suggested to have uh, some uh, place or some people 
to whom to vent in case uh, some of the faculty have some uh, uh, some uh, problem with a student as so to vent and to kind of talk what to do next and so on it didn't happen to me but uh, some people thought that such a resource would be really helpful that deserves a round um And in some cases, that's really a request for an ombudsman because or, um, because sometimes it's about students, but sometimes it's about colleagues, right? Like I, I've had it with this person. I want to vent about this person I work with, but I also want to talk about my options. And sometimes an, an ombuds person is a good person to do that, do that with. And we do not have an ombuds right now, though we do have. Um, other resources, depending on who you're comfortable with. We do have sub sessions sometimes that are focused on emotional wellness. Any others? Okay. Blank. Blank. <laughs> <laughs> As a meditative focus. There we go. Use it from my heart. <laughs> Spiritual wellness. Spiritual wellness involves understanding your sense of purpose and meaning in life. It's a personal journey and could involve prayer, meditation, affirmations, or specific spiritual practices that are meaningful. Using values, beliefs, and principles to help ground your decisions and actions contributes to overall wellness. And I just realized I did not give you my sources. I'm pulling most of these dimension descriptions from two sources. I will put them in. I'm sorry. Like I didn't write this, I put these sentences together. <laughs> They're good sentences, but one was from um, SAMHSA, which is um, the federal agency that focuses on substance abuse. And another was from a wellness toolkit from um, Penn State. And Penn State includes some really great wellness resources because they house a number of researchers that do great wellness research. So which one is not real? Yeah, D is definitely not real. We don't have that. We don't have that. And I'm not even sure. I mean, we couldn't, I don't think it would be appropriate for a state university to fund something like that. But some some institutions will that have larger faith communities on campus will sometimes have um uh pastors or rabbis or the available that serve students that will also serve um, faculty and staff. The Newman Center that's just off campus, for example, serves the whole community, even though it's student focused in its kind of direction. But this one is a challenge. Um, this was actually a challenge for me to come up with four options. As a state university, it's a hard choice. It's a hard thing. So do you have any other suggestions here? They, they do have yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can attend with students. I've done that before, but you kind of look like one, so you can get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't do it again. Yeah. Thinking of some short sessions of breathing techniques, know how? <laughs> Well, I'm faculty and students so this encompasses all type of meditation and it will be helpful for people who have a certain religion or just agnostic but still want to focus and meditate just to know how to do breathing this is helpful for concentration and for intellectual pursuit etc so it's pretty, pretty broad mm -hmm. i will mention that on thursday at one o'clock in classroom 101 in the library we do have a session led by um, professor candace hack in the history department on yoga in the classroom so oh that could be something people might be interested in thank you and sandra i see your comment dedicated quiet meditation spaces is that a wish list item or do we have that and i didn't know 
<clears throat> we do have a quiet um, space in Wilbur, I believe. Oh, do we? For the School of Ed, yeah. And for, I, I assume, all of campus. But there is a very quiet. quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People don't know about it. Where, where in Wilbur? Mm, it's on the third floor of Wilbur Hall um, in the uh, corner it's facing Park Hall. More of those types of spaces are in the works also. Um, mm -hmm. And we might see more, like I'm hoping for the fall semester. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. Ah, Sean says he thinks it's the southeast corner. <clears throat> Which is the same one that they're talking about. Yes. Oh, Hart Hall. Yeah, no, I think it's the other side. But... Park. Park. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And that was eight, by the way, that was eight dimensions of wellness. We did all eight. So I want to say, share three other resources with you. One is the EAP that we talked about. That we talked about. Seriously, it's a good thing. And it's great. But um, two other resources. Um, we, uh, if you came to the symposium yesterday, you already got these resources, but if not, I'm gonna put them in the chat and then I will also, um, let's see, I've, I've just, I'm looking at the wrong thumbnails. Remind me, remind me who's in the room. I will email it to you. It's Maggie. Um, Catherine. With a C. Should come out. Catherine with a C. Sullivan. Sullivan. Okay. So I will email you those two. And that includes um, those descriptions of the eight dimensions of wellness, as well as the um, some of the examples of what you can find at SUNY Oswego. And the faculty and staff well-being resources is from Brian Wallace, and he um, gives a description of sorry, scrolling. Uh, he gives a description of like which can you, when can you access the pool and where are the where are the trails and things like that. And then just so you know, we do have spring breakout wellness sessions after this one that are wellness oriented. There is a mindfulness session on Wednesday morning. So if you're interested in, um, and these, the Kyle is at the, at the counseling center. This should be a great session on grounding and mindfulness. And Amy Bidwell's afternoon session on learning to thrive in life and at work should be fabulous. And hers is more oriented towards um, developing strategies. If you wanna make some change in your own wellness behaviors, but you're struggling to figure out a successful strategy to make that change stick, that's the session for you to help you kind of think through those steps and get you motivated to, to make a change that will stick. And then Candace's very short session on Thursday on yoga in the classroom and for everybody. So I'm gonna stop sharing for now. Um, one of the other things that we did yesterday at the symposium, um, we didn't, where we weren't able to have a really focused discussion on faculty and staff wellness because the focus of the day was on students. That was the purpose, it was student success symposium. But we did have um, some lunchtime discussion around it and generated some ideas of what we would like to see the institution do next and pulling together those ideas from the different tables that there were literally a hundred different ideas suggested, which is fantastic. So we're gonna be compiling those and seeing what is more immediately actionable and what will take some, you know, some more time and what is beyond our control. Like the contract pieces are probably beyond our control since they're state negotiated. But if you have other thoughts or strategies that you found helpful on campus that you think your colleagues would find helpful, we have a chance to share those right now. Sean, anything I left out that you would add? No, I think that's it. Like we have uh, the EAP, I think is something that we referred a lot of our staff to as they needed to go through in these difficult times. I may add just that um, 
this meeting and those meetings which started i guess during covid time are a really a uh, big change uh, this we using uh, we didn't have uh, something like this certain years ago so mm. i think this is very helpful even in normal times so we don't live in normal times anymore but <laughs> even in normal times i think it's important to acknowledge that um, there are some pieces of ourselves which may need uh, you know support uh, about which we don't generally talk during professional meetings and such so thank you very much for this and Marianne has a question in the chat. She says she's interested in whether we can use the indoor track across the street. And I know the answer to that. So I'm going to share with you. This is one of the resources that I just just shared. So you have not had a chance to look at it yet. But this is the one that Brian Wallace put together. Um, Faculty and Staff Wellbeing Resources. And on it, he says the Romney Field House, one across the street, has an indoor walking track that is open in the middle of the day to the campus community during the winter months. Now, I think he called out the winter months because you'd much, it's much nicer to walk on an indoor track than winter months because you can walk outside in the summer months. But I'm not sure if it's open in the summer, but it's definitely open in the winter. As far as I know, the buildings are locked in the morning just because I've run on the outdoor track before and it's mm used -hmm. bathroom. So. Thank you. She's done her research. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. But and, it appears that the building was open so you could use the restroom. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add that to our wish list. I'm pretty sure that was on our yesterday's wish list. Was it? OK, good. Thank you. So where would my son go to um, apply for that lifeguarding job? Oh, Jesse. Or if any of you are looking for summer work, I suppose. I think she said faculty couldn't apply, but couldn't? Yeah, I think that's what she said. My son. Yeah, your son. Yeah. He's already got a lifeguarding job this summer, but I, I wanted to work more. So I'll just see what it's a wellness thing to have your kids work, right? <laughs> Want to make sure they're safe and busy. Anything else, Chris? Munger, anything that you think I've left out or that you want to share? I'm glad the quiet space came up over in Wilbur that Sandy brought out. That I think going over there, I mean, it is very quiet, as Sandy said, but there's also like a like the way the light is done, the um, resources that are within it, it does give a different tone. So if somebody just needed to reset during the day. And you know the the fact that we're talking about faculty and staff wellness, like sometimes people just seem um, to have some sort of joy that there's inquiry on their well being as we're trying to take care of so many student needs. I think helping take care of ourselves and each other is just a huge step too, and to really make that explicit. So I'm I'm just glad these discussions are happening. So I, I, I just want to close by saying that all of you are an important part of my wellness. So thank you. I appreciate so much the support that the faculty and staff at Oswego share for each other. Um, it, it, makes, it makes it a rewarding place to work, even when it's stressful. So thank you all. I will hang around for a minute, but otherwise we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.